I'm back with a bit of a controversial video this time involving jet engines. Normally I would jump right into the action, but this requires a little bit of context. A while back I did a thrust test with one of these small jet engines with three different fuels, jet A, diesel, and hydro diesel. It made a lot less thrust on diesel than it did on jet A or kerosene, basically the same thing. And apparently this was alarming to a lot of people. They were really upset. I got flooded with messages and complaints as well as some mild threats. Everybody asked me to retest it. Maybe my numbers were wrong, but maybe not. Only one way to find out. And I'm not only gonna do a bench test this time, I'm also gonna do a real world test with the triple jet go-kart right here. These are the three fuels that I'm gonna be testing today. The first one is kerosene, which is pretty much the same as Jet A once you put all the additives in. The second is gonna be diesel, straight from the pump. The third is gonna be my favorite, hydro diesel, 20% water, 80% diesel. To start things out, one thing everybody was curious about was the lubrication properties of these three fuels. So for that, I reached out to my guy at Project Farm, sent him some samples, and this is what he came up with. There's a new product on the market that's called Hydro Diesel. So let's do some testing to see how it performs against regular diesel. So the question is, does Hydro Diesel actually provide better lubrication than modern ultra-low sulfur diesel? Diesel had over 500 parts per million sulfur content, which is an excellent lubricant. The new standard is ultra-low sulfur diesel, which only has 15 parts per million. The lubricating ability of diesel is typically tested using a high-frequency reciprocating rig. Unfortunately, I don't have that piece of test equipment, but I do have this lubricity tester which will provide us with some good information. Let's first test the film strength of diesel. We'll begin by adding 40 milliliters into the test cup. The test will last right at one minute. After the test we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine if diesel or hydro diesel provides the best film strength. The electric motor is using right at 425 watts. We'll see how this compares to hydro diesel in just a minute. Apply the pressure every time you can do the math. Okay. Put herself first so her happiness can last. Okay. Let's go ahead and test hydro diesel to see how it compares. Stretch it out, work it out, work it out, pull up, pull up. The electric motor for the lubricity tester is very close to 420 watts, which is slightly lower than it was with diesel. So the hydro diesel definitely seems to have better lubricating properties. Diesel is on the left and hydro diesel is on the right. I have to say, I'm pretty surprised. I really expected hydro diesel to perform poorly, but it actually did better than diesel. Wow, that was really interesting and not what I expected. Now it's time for the real test. Which one makes more power? I have about a gallon of fuel in each flask. This is Jet A, diesel and hydro diesel, and I'm gonna run them exactly in that order. Here we go, this is the kerosene test. What I'm gonna do here is start it up, let the ECU learn the new fuel. Once it hits the target RPM, which is 98,000, we know that it has adjusted itself to that fuel, and then I'm gonna immediately do the thrust test. All right, that was pretty successful. Back with those EMIs again. I don't know where it comes from, but yeah, the EMI shut my cell phone off. All right, so this is gonna be the diesel.
Next up is the hydro diesel. There we go. Hydro diesel thrust test. Okay, that was it for the hydro diesel test. I'm not really sure what happened. I burned hydro diesel before in these jet engines, but this one is really old. It's probably been on the shelf for a year and a half, maybe longer. The real battle is between the Jet A and the diesel anyway. So I'm gonna wrap this up and see what it does in a real world scenario. I've just arrived at the beautiful location here. I have the go-kart unloaded, set up, and ready to go. I'm gonna keep this super simple. I've hooked up the go-kart to the truck with a chain and a scale. First, I'm gonna test Jet A, then I'm gonna test the diesel. And this is a real world scenario, so the jet engines have plenty of fresh air to breathe. And for some reason, I don't wanna be on this go-kart while doing the thrust test. So I've hooked it up to a handheld remote that's gonna allow me to control everything from a distance. If the go-kart happens to break away from the truck, I'll be able to let go of the trigger and the engine stop immediately. That way the damage is minimal. Without further ado, let's get this test underway. See what happens. Ignition, ignition, ignition. Here we go. This is going to be the first test on Jet A or kerosene. That's not good. I don't know, what was that, three or four seconds? The scale is melted. Even though I don't feel totally comfortable with one point of contact here, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna put the chain in only one spot. That way we have twice the distance and uh, the turbines are pretty far away from the truck. Perfect. I think that's far enough away. Let me try this again. Looks like it stayed on until the end. I mean, I do not know how. I get so dirty every time I do one of these projects. I mean, I didn't even see that happen. The results were a lot closer this time. In my previous test, I got about 63 pounds of thrust on Jet A and about 45 pounds of thrust on diesel. And I'm not really sure why. I even went back to that video and checked my work and it looks like I did everything properly. The only thing I can think of is that the viscosity of the diesel is thicker than Jet A. So the pumps are having some trouble pumping it or pulling it through the lines. Or it could have been a quality control issue with the jet engine I had or the ECU or the pumps, who knows. But it still did make slightly less thrust on diesel versus Jet A. That makes sense. Who knows, whatever the reason, I retested it, case closed. And tell me in the comments, if you have one of these jet engines, what fuel do you use? I'm curious. Other than that, I'm just glad that I'm done with this test. I'll see you in the next video.